I am Matt Werbach, the editor of MPF Advanced Magazine and the Creative Services Manager for the National Psoriasis Foundation. Today I'm joined by Dr. Joel Galfan, Professor of Dermatology and Epidemiology at the University of Pennsylvania Perlman School of Medicine. Dr. Galfan is co-chair of NPF's COVID-19 Task Force alongside Dr. Christopher Richland, and he is here today to answer questions from the MPF community about the COVID-19 vaccine. Thank you for being here, Dr. Galfan. It's a pleasure to be with you today, Matthew. The uh, first set of questions are representative of things that MPF staff and leadership have been asked regarding the vaccine and the guidance statements. The second set of questions are posed directly from our community members on social media and through our patient navigation center. And our first question is, will taking the COVID-19 vaccine weaken my immune system? Uh, so the answer to that is clearly no. Uh, the COVID-19 vaccine, uh, like most vaccines, are designed specifically uh, to help the body's immune system uh, prompt a useful and protective response to a foreign invader, a pathogen. In this case, uh, SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes uh, COVID-19. Um, and so it doesn't weaken the body's immune system. Uh, most patients who get the vaccine uh, will have a little bit of symptoms of immune activation because uh, the body is mounting an immune response to protect itself uh, from the virus should it encounter it. And so people can have a little bit of soreness at the injection site that lasts for a day or two at the most. A uh, small number of people may have a little bit of systemic symptoms, may feel a little, a little feverish or a little fatigued or something like that, but it's pretty minor symptoms when it comes down to it. Thank you. When I receive the COVID-19 vaccine, should I continue to take my oral or biologic treatment? In other words, do biologics impact the efficacy of the vaccine? Yes, yeah, so this is an important question and the task force uh, feels uh, pretty strongly uh, that people should just stay on their therapies for psoriatic disease during the process of getting immunized uh, for COVID-19. Uh, and the reason is that the current vaccines available um, are given uh, you know, twice, uh, you know, between three and four weeks apart. So it would be pretty challenging for people to stop their therapies for that point of that period of time. Uh, now, more broadly, um, although psoriasis treatments weren't really studied specifically in the clinical trials of these vaccines, so we don't know for certain if they will meaningfully alter how well people respond to them. Uh, drawing on the literature of uh, flu shots and pneumonia vaccines, uh, we think it's pretty unlikely that the therapies we use to manage psoriatic disease be they pills by mouth or injectable biologics, uh, will uh, meaningfully alter how well the vaccine works for our patients. And so therefore we think for most people, they should just go ahead and get the vaccine. Uh, these are not live vaccines, so they're perfectly safe to take uh, while you're on any of these therapies we use for psoriasis. Thank you. How should I prepare for receiving the vaccine? Yeah, so there's nothing really special you need to do to prepare to receive the vaccine. Um, you should expect that wherever you'll get the vaccine that you'll be observed for about 15 minutes, uh, just to make sure you don't have a, an immediate type of allergic reaction to these vaccines. The likelihood of that happening is extremely low. So currently the estimates about maybe one in a hundred thousand people uh, have a significant immediate allergic reaction. So it's, it's very unlikely to affect any individual that we're talking to today. But to be on the safe side, we want to observe people for at least 15 minutes because this is a very easy thing to treat should someone have this type of allergic reaction. If you have a known history of serious allergic reactions, you know, we would say you eat peanuts and you anaphylax, you know, so bad that you need to carry an epinephrine pen around everywhere you go, or that's happened when you've taken something like penicillin, for example, um, then you should expect to be observed for about 30 minutes to be on the safe side. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Is there anything else I should know as a person living with psoriatic disease? Well, I think that uh, the good news so far in the data that's come out of the pandemic is it seems that having psoriatic disease itself is not a major risk factor for either getting infected 
with the virus that causes COVID-19 uh, or having a, a more difficult course of illness if one gets infected. So that's actually pretty good news. Uh, it also seems like our treatments that we use for psoriatic disease are not major players either uh, in the likelihood of getting very sick uh, from this virus. So we think most patients can continue their treatments uh, during the pandemic period. But of course, if you do become uh, acutely ill, uh, we recommend speaking to your clinicians uh, in many cases, the recommendation is to hold systemic agents during the course of uh, an acute infection. Um, that being said, uh, people with psoriatic disease tend to be more prone to other health issues that we know can put people at higher risk for developing uh, difficult courses of illness. So people with diabetes, uh, people who are uh, very overweight, uh, people with kidney disease or cardiovascular disease, uh, those folks tend to have a, a more difficult course and a higher risk uh, of being hospitalized um, from COVID-19 illness. And so those folks should be uh, particularly uh, cautious. Thank you. That's the end of the first section of questions. And then we have some questions that were posed directly to us, either through social media or through our patient navigation center. And the first one is, since I live with psoriasis, I know that I have an overactive immune system. Will my overactive immune system cancel out the impact of the vaccine? Yeah, so it, it, it will not. And you know, what's kind of interesting about psoriasis uh, and psoriatic disease is that the the overactive immune system is pretty specific to the skin and the joints. Um, and it's just kind of interesting that our bodies sort of evolved to say, if the body's immune system thought there was something wrong in the skin, it just reacts by trying to flake it off. That's basically what the body's immune system is doing. Um, but beyond that, um, we don't think the vaccine, uh, would, there's no reason to think the vaccines wouldn't work well on someone who has psoriatic disease. Great, thank you. Could taking the vaccine make my psoriasis worsen? Yeah, so this is an interesting question. And, uh, you know, theoretically, it's something that we were wondering about as well, because in theory, when you get a vaccination, that's a, a challenge to the body's immune system and, and you have an immune response to that vaccine. You know, it turns out in the large literature of vaccinations that's out there, you know, flu shots, shingles vaccines, pneumonia vaccines, you name it, there's really very little evidence that getting an immunization uh, meaningfully alters uh, psoriasis activity. And so we'll be trying to watch this literature carefully. I mean, we know there's been some case reports and in my own clinical experience that patients who get sick with COVID, their psoriasis seems to get a little bit worse in some cases. But from the vaccine itself, because it's so specific in how it works, it doesn't cause a type of broad immune activation that you would get when you're, when you're sick with a natural infection. Um, my sense is that it probably won't be uh, an issue for our patients. Okay, thank you. Could the side effects from the vaccine impact my psoriasis? Yeah, so we, we think probably not. I mean, the, the main side effects we see from the vaccines uh, are things like react, reactogenicity, which basically means your body responding to the vaccine and building an immune response. Uh, and so these symptoms go away within a day or two. Uh, they usually yield a bit of soreness at the site of the injection in your shoulder. Uh, and then a small number of people will have uh, more systemic symptoms. They may feel fatigued or have a little bit of fever, but it's pretty mild uh, or moderate uh, in the degree of symptoms people have. Great, thank you. And our last question is, do you know when people with underlying conditions might receive the vaccine? Yes, yeah, so this is so tricky to answer because it really varies so much uh, based on state by state or, or county by county. So the best thing I could tell our listeners is that you should look at your, your county government website, your, your county health officials, and see what the plan is for your local community about vaccine distribution. That's the most reliable place to go. Uh, in my own county uh, uh, near Philadelphia, um, you know, we have uh, specific testing available to people in my community. Uh, they have specific uh, vaccines available for different individuals, depending on if you work in healthcare, for example. So it really it depends at the local level. And I would go right to your, your local community uh, government website to see what is going on locally. Excellent, thank you. 
And that concludes our questions for today. And I want to again thank you, Dr. Gelfand, not only for being here today, but for your ongoing dedication to bettering the lives of people with psoriatic disease. So thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for having me today.